What's up? This your boy Spits the Fling, and you're watching the Illest Lines. Hey, what's good, everybody? It's your B fam, Daniel Anthony, and this is the Illest Lines, where we talk about our favorite lines from certain songs. And on today's episode, I have a gentleman with me who's been in CHH for a little while now. I mean, he but he's actually been in the hip hop game for quite a while, and he's got a song out right now that we're going to talk about today called In Too Deep. So I want you to do me a favor and welcome Spits the Flame. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you being on here with me, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me, man. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. It's funny, too, because I remember telling you the other day when you uh, uh, commented on the... Uh, matter of fact, I commented on your post. And um, when you sent the uh, the link to your video, I'm like, thinking, like, I know I've heard that name before. I'm like, wait, this is dude? Because I never knew you, your, your real name. You know what I'm saying? All I knew you was by uh, Spits the Flame because I've seen... Quite a few things pop up every now and then, like on either Facebook or YouTube or whatever, you know. But uh, but it was cool. It, it was cool seeing it because I was like I said, you know, you get to put two and two together. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah, man. <laughs> oh, so you you from Fresno or like did you go up there or or is this something that you've been there for like just a few years or? No, actually, I'm I'm born and raised in Fresno, California, oh, okay. man. Yeah, I've been I've lived here my whole life. Um, wow. so yeah, this is my hometown. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Um, I actually know a couple people from out there. Matter of fact, one of my friends um, from back in the day, he actually used to live out in L.A. Um, he, he goes by the name of E.V., uh, Evan Simmons. He's a, a singer. Um, and then a, a dude named Aware. Both of them, I think both of them are from. Aware. Well, Aware's from, from Fresno. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever yeah, heard I, of Aware? Yeah, yeah. It's my boy. I do actually I have a video okay. with him. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, I must have missed that yeah. one. Yeah, you should check that out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look for that now. Yeah, it's called It's Not Too Late. I don't know if you know who Bree Smiles is. She's on there too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a tight video. You should check it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna look for it then. Yeah, because it's it's funny, like when you get to like again putting two and two together, you know what I mean? You start figuring out that certain people are from certain areas. It's like, oh wait, but I've been over there before, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. funny when you get to see more and more people, it's like, okay, cool. It's like, nice to see people coming up in a different area, you know what I'm saying? Well, first of all. You you look totally different from the other videos that I've seen from like the past. And again, that was another thing that I didn't put two and two together because, you know, it's funny how facial hair can like change of the way a person looks or whatever. Because I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. OK, so that's dude. Um, but like back in, I think it was like maybe 10 years ago where you only known as, as Spitz. Yeah. Right, right. So was that before you started doing um, CHH? Yeah, man. So basically, I got saved August 5th, 2014. So okay. like anything before that, I was just secular, man. Like, right. I mean, I did music, you know, uh, secularly. So that was pretty much what I was doing there. Okay. But um, yeah, I based anything after August of 2014, I just started doing right. CHH. Right, yeah. right. But it, it was cool that, uh, you know, kind of, you know, quickly seeing your sort of evolution from back then until now. And I noticed that you also were in a masterpiece with R Swift uh, that was also showcased through Rapzilla. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So I, we, um, there's a, a, a gentleman named uh, my boy, his name is vision. He's uh -huh. uh, actually, uh, on the record. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we are, are Swift's on that record. There's a singer right. by the name Deja Tom on the chorus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, we, uh, pretty much dropped that joint and uh i mean i was like man it came on raps i was like that's dope you know god opens doors yeah. i was like hey that was, that was awesome you know but yeah it, yeah. Was, it was pretty crazy man like he's he's all the way out there in atlanta you know when we're here in fresno so we just pretty much you know he filmed out there we filmed out here and just put everything together oh, okay you know? yeah nice. well it worked out seamlessly because i couldn't tell <laughs> Nice, nice. So, so how did that whole thing come about? As far as you, you being a or that song in particular being um, associated in uh, Rapzilla. So basically, Vision he put together this project called CWA. It's called mm. Christians with Attitude, and so we just <laughs> wanted to take. Uh, well, I was really he just wanted to take like all the the artists in the, the five five nine area, and you know put them all on a project together, and right. so. Um, we just kind of talking about it like, yo, like we kind of want to feature, um, you know, like somebody that's been in the CHA, uh, CHH game for a while and um, can't R Swift because, you know, we dig his style. So, yeah. you know, we contacted him and he was with it. So 
pretty much just got on a track, shot the video, put it together, and then we released it. Nice. And Rapzilla, you know, uh, so yeah. Yeah, it was, cool, it was cool. It was really cool hearing it because I, I kind of remember seeing some of it before. I just don't remember how long ago it was. Um, but, you know, when things pop up again, like in your feed or in uh, in uh, YouTube and whatnot, you you start to take a little more notice when when they start popping up even more. You know what I'm saying? And I thought that was pretty cool, you know, because there's a lot of people that want to get to the level of at least being, you know, in uh, included in something that has to do with Rapzilla because, you know, CHH with Rapzilla is like one of the biggest ones that's out there. You know what I mean? That really yeah. kind of break people in, so to speak, as as just like uh, Double XL or, or The Source, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. But that's cool, man. So I also noticed that you you have this thing called True Soul Ministries. Is that your label or? Yeah, man. So, so basically, I, I'll just give you a little background on True Soul. So, I mean, like right when I got saved, um, I used to, I used to uh, have my own thing called Urban Love. You know, when I was doing mm. secular, music, that was you know pretty much what True Soul is now. Um, mm. It was called Up, and just basically when I when I got saved, man, God just gave me a vision. You know, mm. and uh, He just said, you know, because when I when I when I became born again, I just told Him, you know, Lord, I don't want to give up you know rap music i want to do it you know for your glory now pretty much god just kind of spoke to me and gave me this vision of true soul man and i just been man. you know that was my ministry you know god gave me that man. name I'm running with it just you know trying to just man. do and do you know what i mean just to go out there and just preach to people rap to people man. about Jesus, you know what i mean so um that's pretty much what how that came to play came to play so that's dope so if, if we could rewind just a little bit, um, let, let's try to go back to, you know, when you first started getting caught up in music and who were your influences? Well, man, I love hip hop. I got a lot of artists, man. But I, I would say, you know, back in, I'll just go from starting from secular to like, you know, just CHH. So right. like secular wise, you know, I grew up off a lot, obviously pop big, but like right. I, I love a lot of East Coast rap, man. Like I just, for some reason, I was drawn to Nas, the most deaf. Mm -hmm. You know, Talib, Common, you know, from, from Chicago and Lupe, you know, Papoose. Like, I like right, Cassie. Right. But um, I, Eminem, though, of all time was my favorite. Um, I still think he's the GOAT, you know, when it comes right. to hip-hop, my right. top. Um, I actually currently like uh, J. Cole, too. I think J. Cole's a, a very yeah, good he's artist. Dope. He's lyrically good. You know, he he reminds me of, uh, like, I mean, he's not like Tupac, but he has some songs that kind of gives me similarities, you know mm. what I mean? Gotcha, but um, gotcha. yeah, I mean, I just but as far as like, I would say, yeah, it was Eminem. I, you know, I would like really study a lot of albums like, uh, you know, Slim Shady LP, Marshall right, Mathers. Right. Those are like my three favorite mm -hmm. from him. And then like anything after that, they were cool. But like, it's just not those those albums. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, right. But uh, I mean, yeah, man. I, I, and then as far as like when I became saved, um, I started like listening to like uh, the first songs I ever heard by Christian rappers was was Bizzle. And Andy Manil and Lecrae. Right, so you right. know, when I beat these guys. I was like, I never knew, you know, CHH had bars like that. I was like, right, hey, right. Guy, you know what I mean? And and I started to, I really really like Andy Manil. I would say he's my 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 favorite CHH uh, mm -hmm. artist. Um, and so like his albums, like Hero, you know, um, uh, what's it called, Neverland. You know, just like, I love these these, these songs right. and albums and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So um, I would say Andy Manil, man, Lecrae, you know, and Bizzle. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's pretty much like a lot of those artists. I just know, you know, and then too, I got to say too, man, going back to the secular realm, like I know every Tupac album, I've had like every Tupac right, album, right. Like, you know, every Tupac and big, you know, but um, yeah, man, I mean, I just really like that East Coast flavor though. You know what I mean? I like that right. hip hop. So that was pretty much a lot of the influence that was on me. Was right, like right. It's funny too, because I noticed that a pretty good amount of, uh, people from the West Coast will kind of venture outside of West Coast territory and and start like digging in the crates for people, you know, from the East, like, you know, Jay-Z and them or even people from, you know, uh, like Houston or whatever, you know, because it's just a different style. And, and I think yeah. sometimes what happens is that you get you've gotten to a point where you feel like you've heard everything in your yeah. area so it's like you know i need something different you know what i mean and I, I think a lot of people will tend to like get drawn towards the other side not the other side like that but you know what i'm saying no i got you yeah, yeah. it was definitely 
Yeah, yeah. So then if if you could count those people as as ones that you you listen to that that at least drew your attention, who would you say that you could know as your like major influences, you know, even from any secular and or, you know, CHH that actually caused you to feel like, you know what, I can I can do this too, you know what I mean? Because either because you were getting on the mic at the same time or, you know, doing it in your toothbrush or whatever, you know, whatever it was that you were doing that made you feel like this is something that I think I could do. Yeah, man. I mean, going back to, you know, with 8 Mile, Eminem, man, like I, I'm a, I'm a type of rapper. I freestyle. Mm. I battle rap. You know, I don't really battle oh, okay. rap. I battle rap in a long time, but I used to battle rap. You know, that's what I did a lot. Right. And just lyrical, man. Like I just would say Eminem, man. Like I just, like I said, at that time growing up and just like really studying his lyrics, mm. those three albums really like this, the Slim Shady LP and Marshall Matters and Eminem show, man. Those right. were like, that stood out to me you mm-hmm. know and i just wanted to be nice like that so i just practiced right. on my craft you know what i mean just kind of just started fr- i started out freestyling and battling at first right. but then I went to the studio you know making records and things like that mm-hmm. and then i put it together mixtapes you know and right. um, i don't know uh, if you're familiar with fashion but i worked with him and you know i started working mm-hmm. with you know different uh just open start doing shows and stuff gotcha. and i was opened up for a lot of like you know um, artists like YG, Sage the mm-hmm. Gemini, you know, Young Bird, Krayshawn, you know, these artists, B right. Major, you know, uh, just, it was just something I started getting more deeper into, man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say Eminem, man, just that whole process of being a battle rapper and just being mm-hmm. lyrical on track, you know, that's something I wanted to be right. like. You know I mean, right, so. right. And and we all tend to do it, you know. Like for me, it was it was always Michael Jackson and Prince, you know, because I mean? I'm I'm a singer, you know what I mean, but. I tend to like I, I tend to like singers that do that that do more than just perform. You know what I mean? Like you you saw Michael Jackson when he you know when we were younger. It's like man, he did more than just perform. You know what I'm saying? Like he was an actual entertainer. You know what I mean? Then you got somebody like Prince who was you know doing way more than than to me in my opinion than Michael Jackson because he was an actual musician. You know, yeah. so you you tend to like follow the ones that that you feel like, you know, dang, like, yeah, I could probably do this, too. You know, you try to moonwalk or you try, you know, you don't dress in the lingerie, though. You don't you don't do that. You don't do that with Prince. Though. <laughs> That's one thing you don't do. <laughs> yeah. But um, so then in, in going through your um, your growing uh, moments and whatnot, what was the turning point for you that made you change from secular to CHH? Well, I mean, I mean, it's pretty much a part of my testimony, man. So can, mm-hmm. is it OK if I give that? Yeah, like that? most definitely. All right. So basically, man, like I said, like all in high school, I, I would battle rap. I would, mm-hmm. you know, do all that type of stuff. And then I remember I was uh, it was July 1st, 2007. Mm-hmm. I actually uh, graduated and it was like two weeks after my graduation, man. I got into a car with, um, you know, other uh, other friends of mine. We were headed to a party. So there's a, a Jeep. It's called it's a Jeep, a Jeep Liberty, right? right? So it only fits five people in the vehicle. Mm-hmm. But like at that time, you know, I wasn't in, into church like that. I wasn't serving God. I didn't, I didn't really right. know too much about that, you know? Right. Uh, I went to church, but I didn't really have that relationship with God. Gotcha. Put it like, right, right. But we were all intoxicated. You know, we were young mm-hmm. kids just trying to go to a party. So seven of us hopped into that Jeep Liberty that only fit five people. So mm. two girls, you know, had to go to the cargo area. And so, like, the driver's drunk. Everybody's pretty much uh, intoxicated. I'm, like, in the back seat in the middle, bro, literally just, like, ooh. you know, just trying to have a good time, you know. Right, and right. I, there was another set of friends that were, like, on a, another car side of us. Like, we were going mm-hmm. down a freeway. And our exit was coming up. So the driver in the car we were in, she tried to turn in front of the car that was next to us, our other mm-hmm. set of friends. And we couldn't make it. So they clipped us. So, like, I'm just in the back seat in the middle, right? I don't have my seatbelt on. We're going 100 miles on the freeway, bro. And yeah. literally, I'm, like, we just crashed, bro. And I, I I don't remember what really happened at that point because I had a concussion. But, mm. like, the news said that I was ejected 30 feet from the car. So, basically, that happened. And the girl next to me, bro, you know, I'm not going to say names and stuff like that. But just, right. just say driver, it's her cousin. She, she ended up dying, bro. You know, she passed oh, away. Man. She died, and then there was another girl that was in the cargo area on the left side. Right. He ended up, you know, being – I just remember, like, because 
when I was laying on the freeway, a lady by the name of Jennifer Loving came and woke me up. And she started like asking me questions like, you know, what's my name? Where am I from? And, and then I just remember seeing the other girl, you know, that was in the cargo area, just being crushed by the car, man. You just oh, kind of hear it's, it's terrifying, bro. You just wow. hear it screaming. Everybody surround. It was just ambulance everywhere, bro. And right. I just remember like falling back asleep and then waking up in the, the hospital room. And I just like everybody was was like everybody that survived because there's two girls that died. Right. Mm. Five of those survived. So I just remember being in that 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 hospital room and everybody mm. just in pain and stuff. And so basically all the injuries I sustained was I shattered my left elbow. I broke pretty much all my knuckles. I shattered my uh, right kneecap. I have an ACL tear on that same leg. I had a fractured left ankle fractured rig almost a punctured lung so like i was pretty banged up bro wow you know what I mean? and um that time i didn't really um like i said i didn't have a relationship with god so yeah. like everything i was ever taught was in sunday school by my grandma my grandma right. always would preach to me she'd mm-hmm. always say me oh i'm praying for you mm-hmm. you know uh, she says one day you're going to do great things for the kingdom she says it says in Acts 16 believe in the lord jesus and you shall be saved you and your household she's like this right. is a promise from the lord, the lord that i lean on so, you know, I'm just like not believing. I'm just a young cat. You know what I mean? Just right. In one ear, out the other. Right, right. Exactly. And you know what I mean? And uh, I just remember as I'm laying on that hospital bed, though, my grandma, because she had passed away around that time. Right. Oh, wow. So like, around, but I just remember hearing like um, my grandma, like just telling me all the stories about Jesus, you know, right. he, he you know, healing blind people, you know, all that right. stuff, you know, miracles he did. And I said, I said, Lord, I said, if this is, you know, if you're the God of the Bible and you're, you're still a healer, I said, I'll spare my life, you know? So he pretty much did, man. I'm obviously here talking to you. And right, so right. That, whole year, that whole year though, bro, it took me a year to walk. Like I was, it was a dark place. I'm like a dark place in my life, man. Like I had wow. to literally had to be walking everything, but, um, you know, a couple of years go by. I mean, I, you know, we just being knuckleheads go back to the right. world. Cause God get his grace was upon me. I went back to the world and it took until, you know, August 5th, 2014, man, I just was going through a tough time in my life. I had, you know, a lot of things were up against me. You know what right. I mean? And, um, I just remember just uh, just that day, man. I mean, I was sitting in my living room, lights is off. I, I, a lot of Jimmy Swagger was in my household. Man. I just remember <laughs> there's a record that's called Leaving on My Mind. It's just playing like mm-hmm. while I'm in the dark. And I just remember the Holy Spirit tugged at my heart <clears throat> and he told me, son, what are you doing with your life? You know, like you don't belong out there in the world. You know, he right. was just stabbed at that, that, that moment of encounter with God, you know, mm. and I, I pretty much surrendered my life to Christ then, man. And wow. that's pretty, everything is transitioned into like just CHH, you know what I wow. mean? So just that life of a Christian, you know, so wow. man, man, no kidding. And something like that. I mean, you never, people never expect to be sort of shaken out of their sleep so to speak, yeah. you know, just like that, you know what I mean? But, you know, to, to hear that kind of testimony, man, just, it just lets me know just how, how great God is and, and just how much he still pays attention to, to us at times when we don't think that he is. That's a trip. And you never expect for things to end up like that. And unfortunately, just like how you said, even after that, you know, you felt like you still kind of like went back into your old ways because it's easy to do. You know what I'm saying? You you get to a point where you you have something happen to you, no matter how big or how small, but big enough to shake you up a little bit or a lot. Yeah. And then you figure, OK, well, you know, I did ask God to help me out and heal me. And here here I am healed. So let me go back out. You know what I mean? Have some more fun. You know what I'm saying? Because why not? YOLO. You know, people people will do stuff like that. You know what I mean? And it, it it ends up being unfortunate sometimes because you don't really know if you have a second chance or a third yeah. chance or a fourteenth chance. You know what I'm saying? And that man, that's that's wild, man. Well, I'm I'm glad that that God saved you in the way that He did, so that you could be able to be here today, man. All glory to God, man. You know yeah, the funny thing about this. I don't want to say the funny thing, but the crazy thing how God works is like what blows my mind is. My grandma, this is how I know God's real. When my grandma was alive, she like had a promise from that verse, you know, mm-hmm. in Acts 16, right? She would pray for me and she would like say, Mijo, you're going to serve the Lord, do things for the kingdom. And it's like, she passed uh, away. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, but I became born again and her prayer was answered, bro. Like even uh, after this, 
You know what I mean? That's like, I'm, it just blows my mind. Like right. every time I think about that, you know? Right, right. So you got, you got saved after she passed away? No, I, well, yeah, yeah, pretty, yeah, after, oh, okay. after she passed away. Yeah, she, um, I grew up, like I said, I went to church. Actually, she was, uh, I went for Sunday school classes, oh, you know, okay. as a youngster, you know what I mean? Right. So I would go, but I would like miss periods of times of not going. I just, and then my teenage years, I just stopped right. going. Just kind of just started doing my own thing, man. And then yeah. uh, that whole accident happened to me. And then basically at that time, I was 19 when I got, uh, actually, I was yeah, about to be 19. I was 18, but I started, you know, um, getting back to normal the way my, you know, like just with my life, just, you know, going places and stuff like that. I just was young still. I wanted to go out in the world. So basically from that time period all the way till I was 25, I pretty much was in the world doing the secular rap and all that pretty much when I, you know, like I said, from August 5th, 2014, I just started doing everything, just, you know, trying to follow the Lord and stuff. So that was pretty much ever since that day. Man, that it, it, it's dope to see the transition, you know what I'm saying, as it happens, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you know that you've at least had one person in your corner the whole time praying for you at every corner, at every moment, at every turn, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that you at least had somebody that was, you know, fervent in their prayer, you know what I'm saying? So that's good. That's good. And good, even more wonderful that it was, you know, somebody in your family. Amen. Yeah. But I wanted to uh, uh, to talk to you about uh, about your song, man. Into deep, man. I gave man salvation. This that everyday life when you live in the hood. People robbing and killing, really up to no good. To no everybody good. going crazy trying to make ends meet. It's hard to get it right when you into deep. It's that everyday life when you live in the hood. Yeah, it was it, it's pretty dope, man. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I mean? And that, what I want to find out from you was what was your um. I guess you could say your your true meaning behind the song in general and what was your favorite line from that song that you would say like okay yeah this is like the line that I really felt God gave me that really made me feel something as soon as I said it yeah so basically in too deep is just talking about like in in and obviously in the ghetto in the hood you know it's easy to get caught up into mm-hmm. crime into you know, just that whole life of being in the hood, you know, just trying to make money or trying to be a gangster or, you know, right. trying to, you know, just get get caught up in that lifestyle. So mm-hmm. I'm basically trying to emphasize, you know, getting into deep is going to lead to trouble. You know, I talk about, you know, just murders, you know, robbing all that type of stuff. It's in the hood, you know, so I'm trying to shine the light on that. Like, hey, this right. is what's going on. You know, people get too deep into this stuff and mm-hmm. they lose their life for it. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, so that's pretty much what the song's talking about. It's just talking about, you know, as you get too deep, it doesn't mean it's too late. You know what I mean? Right. But there, the line I would say that, um, I would say like, it's, it's the one that like, it says, I say, I, I'm not the savior and I can't, uh, make it right, but I know Jesus can't save your life. You know mm-hmm. saying? Like a lot of the other, a lot of the other lines, you know, I'm, right. I'm using lines and all that type of stuff, but just that right, right. there is just. Is gospel, you know what I'm saying? Because right. he's the only one that can save us. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. Like, he's the, the only one that can. So mm-hmm. um, I'll say, you know, I, I'm I'm not nobody who can fix your situation, right. but I'm somebody who can. You know what I mean? Right. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Let me know. Mm-hmm. And that right there is like one of probably one of the most truthful and honest things that you can say because not just because it's gospel, but because of the fact that you you know firsthand that it comes from a real place. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you believe it first. I've always been told before, and I think I've said this before too, that if I, if it doesn't minister to you first, it's not going to minister to anyone else. And if you, if you just go through the motions when it comes to like making these songs or whatever, and it, it could be all about Jesus. It could be all about heaven. It could be all about, you know, his, his mercy and his, and his grace and all that. But if you're just saying the things just to be saying them, just to regurgitate whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, that you're learning, it's and it's not really coming from that place, well, then it's not going to be believable, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. as long as you know that every word that comes out of your mouth is believable, believable because of the fact that you're feeling it, then it's going to be felt by somebody, but at least to the, to the ones that are going to be paying attention, you know what I'm saying? So knowing that, how does how does that make you feel in regards to knowing that 
the music that you're doing is at least reaching somebody. I mean, honestly, bro, I look at what Jesus said. He said, go out, make disciples, you know, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right. So I look at it like my part is this talent I got, right? Like I used it once for a purpose that I wasn't, it wasn't glorifying God. It was just glorifying right. myself, you know what I mean? But yeah. now I actually got a purpose. Like I have this talent that God gave me and I, I, I believe I'm, I'm uh, supposed to use it to give him glory, to, 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 mm -hmm. to promote his name, to make disciples through this. You know what I mean? Cause when I get on stage, man, like, yeah, I mean, obviously I want to show them my dopest bars. I want right, to right. give them, you know, a, a, I like to rock the crowd, you know, I like mm -hmm. to get into it, but at the same time, I don't just rap. Like I mm -hmm. literally get on that stage and I start preaching my testimony, right. the word of God, whatever's on my heart, man. I'm going to, I'm going to lay that message. And I like to pray for people too. I like to like, right, sometimes, same here. you know what I mean? I like to cut my, sometimes I won't even perform a song, bro. I'll be like, you know what? Let me just pray for like God's putting on my heart to pray for some people here. You right. know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, it, it, I just, I think with music, it's like how you draw them in, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? To get people to, to pay attention. And then once I got your attention, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the word of God, man. Yeah. You know, whatever's going to touch you, whether it be the music or whether it be my preaching, whether it be my testimony, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to leave an impact on you somehow. You know right. what I mean? The thing I don't really see a lot, though, is storytelling. I like storytelling. Right. Same you know what here. I mean? Same here. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I feel like that's something that lacks a lot mm -hmm. in CHH a little bit. But I feel like if I can bring some, because when you can storytell, bro, that's like real relatable. That's real yeah. life. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I like to paint those images of like somebody being shot, a gangster, yeah. kid, whatever, somebody doing, you know, that struggling mother, you know, who has, you know, uh, five kids and she, you know, she's uh, mm -hmm. in, in a terrible environment, you know, stuff like that, bro. Right, like, right. I want to, I want to talk about that stuff. You know, right. if someone else talk about it, I want to talk about it. You right, know? right. And those are the things that are important to you. You know what I'm saying? Because either either you've seen it firsthand or you've seen it through other people. You know what I mean? Because people who who at least have some kind of feelings, you know what I'm saying, can still invoke that same type of um, emotion through what they're feeling by what they're uh, of what they're seeing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're seeing it firsthand, obviously that's going to come out, you know, even more so, you know what I'm saying? That, that kind of what makes it uh, pr more personable too, when you're ministering, because people want to hear that. I never realized that at any point throughout the time that I've, I've uh, been saved that, that how important the, the testimony was. You know what I mean? Because the part of me was just like, I ain't telling my business to nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what? I don't know these people. <laughs> I know God. I'm gonna tell him my business. You know what I mean? But yeah. being able to come out and and let people know, um, in in a word or two or in a song, a phrase or two. You know what I mean? That I've gone through some of the same things that you've gone through. It makes people feel like, oh, okay, I can let my guard down now, and now I can really listen. Yeah, exactly. They can you relate, bro. Saying? Right. That's the about christianity man i feel like a lot of people like that are world like in the world mm -hmm. when they see a christian they see them as perfect or they see them as you know they don't stumble they don't right. sin you know or they shouldn't I, yeah you know what i mean and i think when you can be real and be honest and just be i like to say don't sugarcoat right. i think that's when the the unbeliever is drawn more into this person's life yeah. Because you can be an example. I, I'm going to put it like this. You're, you're going to, somebody's going to receive it more from a person they like, or maybe yeah. they'll, they'll have a better connection with, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Relatable to compared right. to somebody who turns them off or something mm -hmm. like that, you know? So I, I think like, if you're like just honest and real, you know, don't sugarcoat, man, you, right. you don't get people that, that see what you're talking about. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Most definitely. Well, I want to ask you one last question before I let you go. <clears throat> yeah. So what would you say in everything that you've heard as far as, you know, even from back then when you were doing secular or even now, you know, through CHH, or you can give me one from either side. What would you say is one of the illest lines that you have ever heard that had an impact on you? Man, that's a good question. Well, I like this one line uh, J. Cole says on uh, – premeditated murder 
-hmm. He says, basically, wherever it's um, wherever it's raining, there's always going to be sun sunshine somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what he's talking about is, you know, even though you're going through this circumstance somewhere, maybe through that season, through that period or that storm, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. There's always going to be sunshine somewhere. You're eventually going to get to that sunshine. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like, whether that be that grind, you're, you're going, you're, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But you're going through the motion, but eventually, you know, when all that hard work's going to pay off, like, you know, it's going to start shining on you. You know what right. I mean? Like make it to that other side, you know what I mean? But yeah. uh, I would say that, that's one of the most, like, that's like one of the, the, that song and just that line just really made me become a J. Cole fan. You know, right. and uh, yeah, so I was probably say something like that. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, that's dope, yeah. and and that's cool too because you know you you want to give people hope. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, especially nowadays, having that hope in something, you know, is what helps build us up, not just as people, but just personally for ourselves as well. Because once we have that, we hold on to that, and then we can you know work that faith in a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. But- yeah, man. So listen, um, is there, uh, other than Into Deep, is there any other um, music that you're working on? Are you working on a whole entire project right now? What you doing? Yeah, uh, so, okay, so the producer of um, that song Into Deep, his name's mm-hmm. Came in Clutch. So okay. um, I'm pretty much working on an album with him right now. Oh, nice. um, Dreams Come True, that's, you know, his his production. Um, oh, okay. 88, 88 Drums makes beats. He's also the engineer. Um, I got a gentleman named Patrick. He's the engineer for the project. So I'm working with them on like that single and then just the album, you know, so we're going to be making some more music. I also have another guy I work with named Mad Tech. Mm -hmm. Um, We have songs that are not uh, like mixed and mastered yet, but we have them like, you know, pretty much we just got to go back and do some editing and stuff, whether he does. But as of right now, the focus more though is the, you know, with came in clutch and them because Right now, Matt Tex, you know, he's kind of going through some personal things. So we kind of just put those projects on hold for now. But I mean, right. yeah, pretty much, I do got some music coming, though. Best believe that, though. Awesome. I'm actually going to be releasing um, another video. Um, probably, I don't know. I don't have a drop date yet, man, but um, it's, it's, uh, it'll be out. You know what I mean? Um, it'll be out soon, too. I'm going to release that and just, you know, just, I just want to put out music, bro. Just put out videos yeah. and just mm-hmm. put this content out, really, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And just yeah. uh, do what the Lord's calling me to do, man. That's you know right. I mean? That's right. Yeah. Ain't no time like the present. <laughs> no time. Exactly. Right, right. And real um, quick, before I let you go, um, where can people find you on social media? Just in case they're not sure, you know, after this or before this. Yeah. So you can go to Instagram or Twitter. Just type in at Spitz the Flame. So S-P-I-T-Z-D-A Flame, F-L-A-M-E. Um, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Spitz the Flame. Uh, YouTube. YouTube.com slash Spits the Flame. I'm on TikTok. Just type in Spits the Flame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've been doing some TikToks? <laughs> uh, I mean, I drop little videos here and there, right. but I mean, I haven't, I mean, I haven't really been up on that, but I mean, I'm trying right. to go a little more on that route, that, you know, that little platform right. there. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you want to like anything for like booking uh, for like events or anything, you could just email uh, SPITZ559 at gmail.com. Um, send inquiries there, or you awesome. can uh, you can call my my personal cell. It's five five nine two eight four eighty six thirty five. So you know, guys cool. got some events. Hit your boy up. Yeah, I'm man. always doing the rock man. So awesome. There. Well, cool. I appreciate your time, man. Most definitely, and 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 thank you for you know being on here with me. Um, I'll definitely uh, keep you posted of anything else that I'm doing as well. And uh, but if there's anything that you ever need from me, let me know, man. For sure, brother, man. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm.